So before I move to my second part, my last question to you, Richard. You know, how about maintenance therapy? These patients were MRD positive or not, uh, who are at risk of relapse, or they had a transplant for MRD positivity. Any role for maintenance therapy with 5 azocytidine or free 3 inhibitors or something, at least maintenance globally? Do you have if any? By, if by maintenance you mean low dose therapy after high dose therapy is completed, I would say the answer is no at the moment. We don't really have strong data uh, to support that. There's been some data from your institution that azocytidine maintenance may have a role, but I haven't really been convinced by that. So. There was data from uh, a, CL, a CLGB trial that uh, Bill Blum uh, just published about decidabine maintenance. It wasn't randomized, but it didn't seem to make a huge difference compared to historical control. So I'm not uh, not yet excited about maintenance. So I mean, if you have somebody who's young who doesn't have a donor, and you induce them with triple seven or high dose RSC consolidation, they are MRD positive, and you don't have a transplant option. Well, first of all, everybody has a transplant option. Well, you and go I don't for use half transplantation. Yeah. Well, every, you know, got haploid transplants, Pretty which you just sent to. So now, you so. can do cord <laughs> blood, and so if they really, if I'm really concerned, again, I don't use MRD yet, uh, but if they have bad disease features, as was outlined earlier, but, I would but send them for transplant. getting to that point with maintenance therapy, you're not going to get a maintenance therapy approved without really developing a standardized MRD assay, because the regulatory authorities basically say, prove to us that there is disease that Correct. you can follow, and that's the reason you're Let's put on aside MRD uh, assessment because we don't have an essay and we can debate about it. Let's somebody had complex cardiotype, and you have 20 gene panel, you have P53 mutation up front, and you give them chemotherapy, and they do respond. You don't have a transplant for whatever reason. Patient refusing transplantation, haplotransplantation, I don't like it. <laughs> Will you consider a scenario where maintenance is justified, knowing that there's no evidence of randomized trials suggesting maintenance? I would well, not. I would not be enthusiastic about maintenance, even in that setting. Okay. The lack of adequate. Okay. Every trial care. that has looked at it has okay. failed. Right. So, so, okay. so can I add, uh, build on one thing that Marty said? That uh, it, it is pretty clear that if you ask any of us, what mechanism do we have to prevent relapse? Allogeneic transplant seems to have the best activity. Okay. Um, and so we select patients based on genotype, CBF translocations, maybe normal karyotype with nucleophosmin or biallelic CBP alpha mutations to um, do consolidation and whole transplant in the event of relapse, mostly because of the transplant-related toxicity we're trying to avoid in that relatively good set of patients. But I do want to bring up uh, an important abstract um, that's being presented at this meeting by uh, John Pagel for an intergroup study uh, led by SWOG, SWOG 1203. We look to see if we can improve the outcomes of patients with complex, poor-risk karyotypes um, uh, who are undergoing AML induction chemotherapy. And so there was a concerted effort for those patients to get HLA typing done during their remission induction therapy with a, um, through the National Marrow Donor Program. Patients who achieved a remission and who had high-risk karyotype and uh, had the typing done then would go on to transplant. And what he's going to present is that we were able to increase the number of patients going on to transplant in that subset of patients up to 60% of the patients from our historical control of only 40%. And it looks like those patients may be doing better. Um, so what does this mean for a practicing physician? I think if, if we really believe this is true, then I would advocate for getting younger patients, definitely maybe all, but younger patients to a transplant center to get even their induction chemotherapy unless the center has the ability to do HLA typing very early.